Hello reformers and welcome back to Parisno. Now when we left off we were still in Elantoran territory. Now I've bought some acres in the past episodes at Lyon and I, I felt like that was enough so I don't really have to go and get more. Obviously the amounts of money that they give you is not particularly good. I was gonna say that you know, maybe we should just purchase acres in all these kinds of towns and then just run around trading and doing all that sort of thing to gain money. But I think in the long run, it's probably much, much better to go for things like weavery and dye works, oil presses, tanneries and iron works in various towns all around Parisno. Obviously, if we can do that, then that's going to pay off absolute dividends in the end. But as it stands, I don't actually have enough money to be able to pull that off. So what I've been doing is just kind of running around here trying to find a couple of bandit parties in the, well, shall we say, Draharan territories. Now as you can see, I've actually just taken a quest. Yeah, I didn't do these things, by the way, either. Yeah. I, I, I kind of was just like, uh, do I really want to do that? No, not really. So I decided, hey, you know what? What do we do when we want to make money? We head into the Northern Territories, near the Northern Territories, shall we say. I think we're probably going to head into Maccabean Territory very, very soon as well. But for the most part, as you can see, we did just take a quest from the Guildmaster at Kulvara because we obviously want to get some quick cash. Now, I'm not entirely sure how much cash we're going to gain from this particular quest. Hopefully, it's going to be pretty good because it's Parisno and Parisno I've noticed the tasks that you gain they do give you much better rewards in general than doing for example native or other mods that stay very very faithfully to the reward structure that native had so if you hopefully are able to actually you know benefit from this guild master sort of quest line you know here and there and everywhere all the kinds of different towns then i think we should be in a really good position oh yeah also i did stop by the mercenary guild i recruited 40 more hired recruits that cost me about well they were seven 70 76 i think 76 per 10 so that's 760 every single 10 so you can obviously work out how much i spent in general and that's the reason why I have much less money now, obviously. I do have some loot still in my inventory here, so we're going to be selling that. We're going to be trying to gain as much money as possible, as stated previously. Now, let's see how much I'm actually going to gain from this. I don't actually know. We're going to be losing a little bit of relation with the person that gave us the, uh, you know, hunting down the murderer quest. You know, we're going to lose a little bit of relation with that person but in my opinion that's absolutely fine okay so 336 yeah okay so that's not particularly good but we did get some renown and we now also have some relation with Kulvara which obviously then in turn means that we will maybe get a little bit of extra opportunity to buy some enterprise here so anyway let's have a look here so buying an acre costs what 3,000 Da, 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 da. Okay, the rent paid to landowners currently accumulates to 794 orums per acre every week. Yeah, that's the thing. I went to Lyon and I gained my money from, you know, from that week because it said I had a balance there and it gave me about 491. So you can kind of tell, not really worth it, was it? No, not really worth it. But I think it's a pretty cool way to earn passive amounts of money. And by that I mean you're running around, you're doing things, and it's a pretty cool way to kind of earn a bit of a stockpile while you are just doing those things, you know? You don't always want to have that money on hand because you're going to spend it. You're going to spend it and then you're not going to have anything remaining. So it's kind of nice to have something there just in case. So we're going to go into Maccabean territory, technically into here, into this territory. And, oh, no, I don't want to go that way, thank you very much. I'd like to go around this way. Oh, no. Have a couple of navigation problems, yes. Okay, let's just try and avoid anyone that wants to murder us. Yeah, I did try to get another task as well, by the way, from the princess. 
she is not particularly happy with us because every single time I go and speak with her, she is just like, can you get me some prisoners from Geldar? And I'm just like, no, well, uh, no, not really. Because <laughs> I actually went down there just for a brief second and I saw so many armies. I was just thinking to myself, if 500 Elan Torans would not be able to deal with these, then I don't think I'm going to be able to either. So I decided to just, you know, book it out of there as soon as possible. Oh, what is this? Now this is something that I wouldn't mind attacking, but they have maiden foot knights and female assassins. I can assume that those are going to be extremely good. Actually, hold on a second. Let's view the troop trees, shall we? Okay, so wait a minute. They have... Who? Who do they have again? They don't have maiden champions, do they? Wait, let's have a look here. Ma maiden foot knights. That would indicate that they are not mounted, if I am correct. Let's actually just have a look here. Okay, so... No. No. Male mercenaries. Female mercenaries. Okay, so we just have stalkers there. Oh, Maiden Foot Knights, there they are. Well, they're quite dangerous, but they don't appear to use shields that often. I mean, yes, they do have a two-handed sword, and they do have a shield available, which is obviously going to make things very, very difficult for us. They have eight in shield. Oh my, okay, so how many do they have of those? They have about 15 of those, don't they? What about female assassins? Can I see any female assassins here? Oh, there they are. Oh, my. Oh, yes. And they're also the highest levels. Oh, dear. I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. If we do this, we're going to gain a pretty good amount of prisoners. I mean, as you can see here, we're going to gain... Well, technically, we can recruit them. But Knights of the Eagle, Eagle Retainers, some Soot Berserkers, some Elite Rakan units as well. And we also have Hakon Imperial Knight... I don't know. I don't know whether it's worth it, to be honest. I mean, we're going to lose quite a few units doing this. Well, let's just let's just level up a couple more of these archers here, because we certainly are going to need them. Uh, okay, fine. Let's do it. For the experience and the money, and potentially the recruits as well. We do technically outnumber them, but if they are on mounts, and I was incorrect about them not being... On mounts then obviously we're going to be in a really really bad position but I have I have a bit of a bit of faith that maybe I'm you know gonna be a little bit correct here perhaps yep yep it seems like they don't have mounts there's only one that has a mount and that's that's good that's that's pretty good to see okay so let's get our cavalry out the front there and our infantry can just go and charge in because we want to make sure that our archers don't get picked on too much. Going to try and see... Ooh, a nice headshot by me there. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do too much damage to this particular enemy. It's just way, way too powerful for us. A Marauder. Oh, okay. Not bad. I'm just hopeful that our archers will do a good job, to be honest. Okay, so I don't really want to tell my cavalry to charge in, to be honest. But we are primarily going for an archer-focused army here, so I don't know whether it really matters too much whether most of our units perish. If they do, then I suppose it's... Uh, yes, yeah, it's hi hired recruits. The hired recruits. Oh, no. The hired recruits are all cavalry, technically. Well, they're all technically... Wow. Oh. My. That might be bad. That might be extremely, extremely, extremely bad. Okay, thank you. Thank you for doing that headshot. Thank you so much for that headshot. I was so worried for a second there. I was literally just like, oh, it's coming towards me. Arr, you know, <laughs> I was literally going to get absolutely murdered. Okay, so these are female assassins. They have a lot of damage. Yes. Yes, I'm going to try and heal my forces right here. There you go. Let's recover them a little bit, and then I'm just going to tell them to charge in, because if we can knock these unconscious, if we can knock these maiden... Oh. We actually did it. I was actually kind of surprised there for a second, because I was just like, these are going to be impossible to kill. But no, apparently not. 37. Renowned for that. Absolutely fantastic. Really nice. We did take a pretty considerable loss from that. We did lose six hired recruits, because I actually forgot that they're not equipped with bows, 
I don't think. I don't think they're equipped with bows, at the very least. Well, I can't find out now, because they're all dead, I guess. But anyway, the point is, we do have some really, really nice prisoners to take here now. Oh, yeah. Give me that. Give me all those. That is what we like to see. Okay. Now, we do have our choice. Technically, we, we're not able to get all of them. All of the really, really good recruits. But we have a choice between all of these. And I think we're probably just going to be taking all of them, to be honest. I mean, we don't know what they become. They could become something really, really good. And maybe they'll come in handy as time goes on. I mean, obviously, we're going to take the farmers and the peasant women and things like that. Because they do become Parisno units. And we like those quite a bit anyway. Let's level those guys up a little bit too. All right. Oh, nice. Battered Black Greaves. Obviously, I'm not going to be taking those, unfortunately. I'd like to be able to, but, well, that's the thing. I am actually going to be taking them. I'm just going to swap out a little bit of food here in exchange for these things, because they're going to sell for a lot of cash. Definitely a lot of cash. Oh, yeah. By the way, the reason why I'm not allowing our heroes to select gear is, well, that's the thing. I, I'm actually unsure about that, because Xi Jin has amazing gear. I don't really want him to change anything. And Slighter has some pretty bad gear, but he doesn't really have the strength requirement. But I could... Wait a minute. I could potentially give him those, couldn't I? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go and check to see what Slighter's stats are like. 10,000 experience shared throughout the entirety of our party, by the way. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so let's go and see Slighter. Alright, so... Let's see, is there any good body armor here for him? No, but I could give him a shield. No, he doesn't have the shield skill. Uh, he doesn't have the shield skill for that, which is unfortunate. He's wearing some good gloves already. And the boots, he can wear those boots. So that's, that's good. It's a minor upgrade. Don't have anything for him in terms of a helmet or anything like that. I could give him this sword, which is a one-handed. Don't think he can use it. No, he can't. He doesn't have 16 strength. I think he has 15 strength. 14 strength, actually. So he is two levels away from getting that. Not entirely sure whether we're going to get him that anyway. Let's get some more Prisoner Maiden recruits and Prisoner recruits and things like that. I think we have enough people that can take prisoners now, so I'm pretty happy with our setup. Anyway, we're going to go into Murdenhall over here and try to sell our prisoners. Obviously, yeah, I did say that I was going to fail that quest in just a second. Hopefully none of our companions are going to complain. I think I have companion complaints disabled, so I don't think they're going to. Anyway, sell them for 3,500. Very nice. We could also get these mercenary impoverished knights. Don't think I'm going to. Remus just tells you a story, by the way, so if you are wanting me to speak to him, then, well, I've already done that in one of my other prisoner series. I'm not entirely sure which episode it was, but it was a story about wolves and betrayal and things like that. Ah, what is the matter, my good man? Okay, so I'm actually going to go and help this village because we want to get as much honor and things as possible. How much honor do I actually have? I have 10. <laughs> yeah, I have 10. Okay, so I have no right to rule or anything like that either. I am a mercenary captain in service of Elentor. Yes, I am. Yeah, so I'd like to... Try and get a little bit more honor. So where do I have to go? Village of Dubahal. Dubahal, where is that? Oh, it's all the way down here. Okay, so it's not too far away. We actually have a pretty sizable army now. I'm actually kind of surprised. I mean, I know we were able to rescue a very, very large band of prisoners there, but... It's always surprising when you go from having 47 units, which we had in the previous episode, to having 87, and then obviously to add the additional prisoners on here, because obviously the hired recruits that I gained were, yeah, they, they numbered in the 40s. So that's pretty good. Anyway, we're going to try and get back here. I am going to allow the bandits to just walk through the village. And we're going to have a pretty nice shooting angle on them, if most of my archers are actually here. I do have 34 archers, but the obviously the farmers are not going to be very good. They're not going to be very helpful here. Nice, a little bit of damage done by Scout there. I'm actually kind of surprised by that in itself, because literally he's, he's not particularly good, is he? He's not particularly good at his shooting. I mean, his bow is absolutely awful. I think that's the main reason why we're actually not very good with it. Because, I mean, just look at the accuracy that we have right now. It's really, really bad. I do need to get much more proficiency, though. And the only way to do that is to hit things. 
from long range. So, yeah, I'm going to try and... Oh, are you serious? Are you serious? Come on now. Is he really that bad? Oh, there we go. There we go. A little bit of extra damage there, but... Seriously, the accuracy is so bad at the moment. Obviously, I'm also not helping things, really, but the accuracy, I mean, just look at that. That is very, very wide. That's a very wide angle for us to actually get any kind of accuracy out of. So, I guess what I've got to do is either move forward and get a little bit closer and then obviously reduce the chances of me getting proficiency or just in general, I don't even know, just try harder, I guess. Okay, let's see if I can do anything here. Is there anyone there? No, there's no one there. Oh well, it seems like we're absolutely fine. I'm just gonna tell the just gonna tell the farmers to charge in. Go, farmers! I choose you. Use it's harvesting season. Yes. <laughs> Use that ability. Yes. It's super effective. I've heard it's super effective at least. Anyway, these guys are most likely gonna be able to eliminate the remaining wandering criminals because I mean how many do we have? We have I, I don't even know. We have a lot of farmers on the field of battle here, so we should be absolutely fine. And where are the remaining units? They seem to be all the way around the, the buildings here. They're kind of just hiding from us or something. Wait a minute. What What is actually going on here? There seems to be a slight issue. There is a slight issue here. Oh, no, maybe not. I thought there was a bug. I thought they had spawned inside the village or inside one of the structures, but apparently not. Yeah, no, farmer. Oh, you got absolutely cleaved in half, my friend. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Well, anyway, it seems like they just got stuck behind their horses, amusingly enough. Which is fine, because we'll be able to take them out, no problem at all. I'm actually pretty decent with a sword in this mod for some reason. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm okay with a sword in general, but... I'm really bad at archery in this mod at the moment because I'm going to need some more accuracy. Maybe I can find a bow with more accuracy or something like that. 37 renown is our reward for that. I'm actually really surprised by that as well. I mean, what's going on here? I'm just gaining renown left, right, and center. I like it. All right, so we gained some really nice relation there and some honor. Shall we speak to the village elder and see if we can help him with anything? No, it seems like he doesn't really want our help, which is absolutely fine. I mean, I'm I'm perfectly happy not helping with anything. I, I'd like to just move on. Is there anyone else that needs leveling up? No. All right, so we have a pretty decent amount of money. Obviously, I am going to continue looking. Oh, wait a minute. Why didn't I even sell? I didn't even sell? Are you serious? Come on now. Okay, so that is a... Wolf Knight War Party. Now that is the kind of thing you do not want to get involved with because we have found out that I cannot recruit Knights of the Eagle anyway. I might be able to recruit some Eagle Retainers, but probably not all of them. And I probably won't be able to get the Demon Invokers or the Demon Priests. Maybe be able to get the Demon Worshippers from their prisoners anyway. So it's a good idea to try and stay away from very powerful parties like that. Anyway, let's go in here and see how much money we're going to make. I'll keep the elven horse just in case. And I'm going to sell everything else. There we go. Almost a thousand. That's pretty good. I have six horses. So that's the maximum that we can get without, you know, reducing vastly our speed. And I'm going to sell the splintered greaves as well. And I might get some fine butter. Not some wine. Thank you very much. So, shall we assess the local prices actually? Because if we can take some things from here... Like, for example, let's see, what's actually good here? So, iron. So, if I were to take iron and go to Grund, that would bring a pretty decent profit. So, let's have a look. I've got... Oh, there's two iron bars. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go to Grund, and we'll fight some things along the way as well. That's usually what I try to do in these situations. When I feel like I don't really have much objective, it's always a good idea to take on a little bit of trade. So if you have a little bit of extra money, you want to go and take some of these things and trade them. I'm going to renew my bond with Queen Arwen for another month because I can technically transition into being a vassal, I think, at any point. And that will then obviously mean that we will be, you know, a true and true vassal. Okay, so is there anything here that we can fight? Yeah, that's also the thing that you've got to bear in mind, that we have to be quite careful about where we're going right now. Because I know in these areas there are some Volhir Nisanian bandits, or at the very least there were in the previous version of Prisno. So, 
those guys might be quite difficult for us to take on. Obviously the Ilica Falchi, they are also in the area. So they're also something to bear in mind. They are very, very difficult to take out. Whoa, those... What? Okay, so let me just say something real quick here. I think this guy, King Bullius of the Soot Giants, he's running around with 34 glorious knights of the Great Holy Bull. Yeah, I, I think that those units are utterly devastating. I think they are probably going to be one of the most devastating things that you've ever seen. And they aren't even in the troop tree, so I have no idea what they're capable of. But I can only guess that they're going to be insane. Yeah, I mean, look at, look at the Chieftain's Guards, right? So just imagine this. And then times that by 5 or 10 or something like that. And you can probably come across how much they, how good they are. I don't even know, but yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so here are some Nissanians. Now, these guys are way too big, I think, for us to actually take on. And they don't really have very good prisoners either. But that's the kind of party that I'm thinking of taking on at some point. When they have been maybe a little bit weakened somewhat. Because you really don't want to deal with them right now, do you? I mean, they're really, really strong. And, oh no. Okay, he's not going to get me involved in this. No, no. Okay, so these deserters are, for some reason, attacking me. Well, now, there you go. They decided against it. That's good. All right, so we're almost at Grund. And we'll be able to sell our iron there. And then maybe we'll get a little bit more trade and things like that. But I do need to start fighting a couple of things. So I'm probably going to fight a couple of things in this area. Maybe a little bit off screen. Gain a little bit of cash that way. Because obviously we can take prisoners, and that's always a good idea in my opinion. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, the people of Valor here, they have an insane, an insane army right there. Wow, okay. Everything has been turned up to 11 by the looks of things. That's crazy. All right, so yeah, let's sell the iron that we have there for 300. That's pretty nice. Uh, you know, it's a small, it's a small profit, but... It's a profit nevertheless. I think that's always a good idea. Anyway, they'll get... Oh, wow, look at that. The Geldarian... They're, they're, well, shall we say the Geldarans are actually being eliminated here. They seem to have been defeated in battle. All right, so Flax Bundle selling it at Ford. How much Flax do we have here? Well, a, a couple. I suppose that's okay. I could also take a larger bounty. I might like to do that at some point. Probably not right now. Who's that? Oh... I'm the person in charge of selling Valley Hair Faction Mercenaries. I'd like to hire some. Would I? Not really. I'd like to hire some more of those Elintor ones, perhaps, because they're, they're pretty good. You know, they're not too bad. Okay, larger bounties. A group of Eagle Knights and asked me to... Okay, they told me that demon worshippers were close and the land needed cleansing. All right, I'm, I'm going to do it. Just because I want to see what kind of party we are faced with. I hope they're not going to spawn right outside. I don't think they are. It doesn't look like it. Ah. Oh, there they are. Okay, so they have 9 demon invokers, 26 demon priests, 46 worshippers. Okay, so the only thing I'm actually kind of worried about are the invokers and the priests. I think they're going to be a bit difficult. But let's see whether we'll be taking them on in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.